Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to the Journey Podcast. You already know this is a new edition for the Journey Podcast, the number one podcast in the country. And this is your boy Manzinga. And today, I'm not only excited, I'm also very happy to have my sister in the house. And I want to take some time to introduce her. She is not only very special, but also very talented. And um, yeah, let me just... Welcome to Alin. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to Journey Podcast. Thank you very much. I'm Anytime. Really, really happy to be here. Yeah. Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. yeah. Looking good. I see the drip there. You know, <laughs> like, yo, I just need to go home. You know. Uh, oh. But I also feel like we planned. You know, the fashion. I'm like, oh, white yeah, t-shirt, white I mean, shirt. You know, like yeah. glasses on. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course. If you're gonna have a fashion designer in your studio, you, you better level up, you know. So how are you? Get, you? get ready for them. Exactly. How yeah. are you? Oh, I'm I'm good. I'm really yeah. good. Yes. Because it's been a while. I haven't um, we haven't seen each other. It's been like one month or two months. Almost two, actually. Almost two. Because it was before. Okay. Like. Before New Year's. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, before New Year's. Mm. Yeah. Because we met in a little gathering yes. with friends. <laughs> yeah. And since then, I haven't seen you. I was only seeing your work on social media. And you've been doing great. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, I'm not where I want to be, of mm. course. But, but you're doing I, great. I mean, like, I'm, I'm on the way. Yeah, because I've been watching your work and seeing all the stuff you've been doing. Now you have your fashion brand yes, out, I you mean. know. And we're going to talk about that also, of course. And also, I've been watching your photography you've been doing you know and uh dang girl you're killing it you know and <laughs> i'm trying just hire me you know hire me as your model you know because now you're starting to do um to elevate with your brand and i'm sure you're gonna need model so i'm here yes guys yes. when i vote. include men in mm. my brand yeah okay it's now for females just just for yeah. women for now because mm. it's Okay, I'm more comfortable in that way because, you know, learning, you know, I was self-taught. Yeah. And so, you know, like, you know, I was using myself as a model, like, sew something small, wear it. And so it's like the measurements, the, the cutting and everything. It's like, it's like for women now, it's yeah. what I'm comfortable in. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm learning more. So Nice, very yes. nice. But now... um for our listeners, I want to take some time to go back now because with the Journey podcast, um, I've always wanted to like focus on the journey of uh, artists, you know, and um, I'm sure there are people out there who knows you and there are people out there who want to know you, you know, <laughs> who want to know you and want to know who is actually Aline that you invited to your studio, you know. And uh, yeah, if you want to share and talk about uh, your journey and uh, share who is Aline, first of all. Aline is me, and I am Aline. Yeah. I do a lot of things. You know, I haven't really... I don't think I have reached the level where I know everything I'm capable of because every day, like, you know, almost every day, I discover something new that I can do. Mm. And so, like, for now, yeah. <laughs> for what I've discovered, for what I'm comfortable in, I, I'm a model, yeah. or used to be, because I'm not really actively trying to do modeling right now. I do fashion designing. I used to sing. That's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Okay. You just you just did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um uh, I I paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and now I'm acting. Wow, it's a So long you're just list. a multi-talented artist, you know, full yes. of uh, a lot of talents. And surprises because I surprise myself all the time. That's amazing because that means you are very open to explore. You know, yeah, different, I'm uh, very open to experiencing new things and yeah. you know seeing where it can take me because I'm all about trying to use different ways of showing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I nice. also write poetry. I forgot that. Amazing. Yes. We need to work together, girl. Anyways, because I remember um, when we met been like five months i guess yeah yeah when i met you the first time you were with a friend of mine and when i saw i was like oh this girl she have some swag you know <laughs> it's not every day you 
you compliment people you know you, some everyone is looking good you know it's an event and but some people there is also that I don't know how I could say this there is also that uh, fashion but also the art on the way they're dressing you know and yeah. that that catches uh, your intention mm -hmm. and I think that's what happened to me when I met you you know and I was like dang hi how are you nice to meet you you know yeah, like, and then I was like hey w what do you do and then you told me you're a fashion designer and we started to have a genuine conversation and then I was like ah maybe I should invite you on my podcast you know because when I started to follow you on Instagram I was like wow I didn't know we have these um, young female talented in Rwanda who are very into like fashion designing you know because Yes, we have many fashion designers in Rwanda, but for me, when I saw your work, it was really different, really different from uh, what I usually see in Rwanda, you know. And I was like, actually, this is uh, this makes me curious, you know, to even uh, want to know more, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that I think uh, I'm very excited that you're here. I'm, I'm very excited. Very excited mm -hmm. to be here as well. Yeah. Because I've been stalking your Instagram, sorry. <laughs> but then when I stalked your Instagram, I saw that you were in Ghana. Were you walking in Ghana or...? Oh, I went to study there in 2016. Mm. And I've been there for four years now. That's where I actually started modeling as a profession. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing it part-time with school. And then, you know, going along, I... So that what I really, really liked about the fashion industry or the, the modeling is not the working. It's not the working, even though, you know, you know, my catwalk is pretty yeah. good, no. <laughs> I guess. Okay. <laughs> and, mm. and so I realized it's the, it's the thrill of seeing the clothes, taking the risks and, you know, it's like planning a rebellion in terms of clothing. Yeah. And there is just like a lot of things i saw and you know connecting dots because of i used to make dolls when i was small mm. and i would make clothes yeah uh, like small skirts for mm. the dolls um yeah i used to make them out of plastic bags <laughs> wow and i was like you know i mean a lot of people thought i was crazy and mm. i thought i was crazy too because it's like wow what but is that this? is amazing because you were that kid exploring you know yeah. yeah and so it's like you know as i got to know myself more i started to see that this is not something i'm learning now i've always had it but now is the time i make a way for it yeah. and bring it out and share it to the world yeah nice yeah so that's how i got to know i i could do this i could design something and wear it because i i would buy clothes and i want to alter them to suit the way i want them to look and so i was like why not have my idea and you know explore it instead of you know just like okay you know if someone makes clothes and you take their clothes and you alter them you're yeah. killing their style mm. but instead of killing my other people's style i could make my own yeah out of you know from scratch and so that's what i'm trying to do and trying to share my style with other people who would find themselves in the style uh, because i want my brand to be kind of a, it's more of a concept or different ideas joined like um my first collection is called skin skin yes mm. so it's it's about celebrating one's skin you know um I've always had a problem with um, the way women dress, depending on the depiction of the other gender yeah. or the other race, mm. or it's just like how you look. Everyone having to have their opinion and their opinion actually maturing. Yeah. And I think that's a problem. So I combine um, poetry and clothes. Yeah. yeah, so my first collection is being delivered from a poem where I want to use the clothes to communicate that idea without using words. Yeah. Yes, so it's it's more than just clothing. It's, yeah, it's a message yes. you want to give us to yeah. us. And also I think that is a very, very important uh, subject to address on because I'm not a woman, 
but uh, I love women and um, I respect women and also I know that the society sometimes uh, we have beliefs that really need to change you know and okay. when you talk about that really I see that because I have sisters you know I have a girlfriend I I know how it feels you know I know I don't know like directly how it feels yes. but I feel I feel you you know and I know yeah we artists need to play a role into changing that narrative or that idea people have you know that believe yes. yeah and uh exciting exciting so now let's talk about the process when you're doing it what makes you choose when you're doing um when you're working on any like any project for example you know when you're choosing your clothes what what inspires you to choose you know like the fabric what is the push behind it you know um at first um i would just use anything because you know i was a student boarding school just like cutting my old clothes and making a fabric out of it but now i know um there are a lot of things depending on the weather depending on it's it's a lot of things actually combined. When you're going to make a garment, uh, you have to look at the, let's say that the, you see people in Rwanda, yeah. let's say. And most of the times you are inspired by your surrounding. Mm. So a collection, maybe my collection, when making it in Rwanda would be different from the version of it, like I would have if I was making it in Ghana. Yeah. Because I know the, the the interest of the people or the the culture, the traditions. I mean, there is like um, you have to bring something in you out, but also not be very very insensitive mm. to the people that you are making it for. Yeah. Because when it comes to fashion designing, for me, yes, the ideas are mine, but it's not about me remember yeah. because um, I'm trying to communicate something I'm trying to give a message so one I look at the people I'm creating for and yeah my, myself included yeah of course uh, the fabrics the mm -hmm. colors I mean the colors can be based on maybe the mood of the the clothes like where do you wear that maybe some some colors are more sophisticated than others some colors are more party like than others and others more formal yeah. and you you look at all of those things and when your colors when you are going to choose your fabrics there are fabrics that are woven there are others that are you know like there are different types of fabrics and some of them they they contain heat and others reflect like white like this shirt yeah, yeah so if i'm making a summer collection then i'm going to include things that are flowy and that let the air come in because it's it's sunny yeah but when you're using so we are making something for a rainy season then it has to be like you know jeans leather and there are a lot of fabrics you use to like you know you have to keep in mind the other things you know apart from just your styles and just putting it out there yeah because yeah. does that mean like because i see your point and i also f makes me wonder so, for example, if you're doing, um, working on a war project uh, on Ghana, for example, yes. you know, you have to, does that mean you have to research, like, the culture, if it's sensitive, what you're going to do, or to okay. make sure that people will feel comfortable, you know, I mean, wearing your wearing, brand or okay. anything? I think um, my brand is not for everyone. Yeah. It's for those people who want to really like feel free and so it's a little bit edgy and unconventional. I, I know that. Mm. And I did this, it's kind of a soft rebellion. Yeah. Right? Because I've come to the realization that um people don't really listen to words. They listen to actions. Like what are you doing about it? Yeah. And so, if I'm, okay, having lived in Ghana for four years, you, you okay, I try to be, you know, to experience things, like try their food, be try to be, you know, a part of them, mm. so that I can 
you know, put myself in their shoes yeah. and see how, like, if I was Ghanaian, how would I like this? Mm. But also, it's it's really hard. It's it's very challenging to try and fuse other people's culture and your ideas. Most of the times, they don't they collide. Yeah, they collide most of the times, and it's happened to me so many times here that I have had to change styles, which is which led to like the delay in you know I haven't had an official launch of my brand. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so I've been facing those things because I have like people who advise me <clears throat> and I show them I need their opinions and you know combine them with mine and see what I can do about something. So yeah. it's 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 really really challenging because people don't necessarily see using your eyes. They never do that. They see according to how they see things, according to how they think and yeah, so I'm working on on a way to make people understand or you know use my clothes to make them understand. Yeah. But also, I don't know. It's also I think it's a process. Yes. But not everyone will also understand. Yes. That's the thing. I feel like um we are not always supposed to understand everything. No. <laughs> and uh definitely I mean cuz I saw you are focusing more on um female side also yes. i don't know if it's uh unisex or it's only female bra- uh, like walk you're only working on for the moment mm. are you planning to also work on male yes um, i'm planning to you know work on on men's clothes yeah because um okay the first thing i was doing you know it depends it all depends on the inspiration like why am i doing this it it all comes from the why for me yeah and you know the first collection my message is for me and people who have always not felt free or comfortable in their skin yeah and so and most of the times it's it's women they have a lot of insecurities. I have been there and I just want to help those who are there to come up and see the light yeah. and, you know, see their skin everywhere where it means everything. Exactly. And so, Beautiful. yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the mission. So when it comes, when I have an inspiration that speaks to everyone, I could make a unisex collection if I have, the, but I'm hoping I'm willing to include men after you know I get to learn more about the male side of fashion because yeah. you know as a woman of course my first instinct is you know female because I'm one of them yeah. and I know how it feels to feel nicely dressed and to feel good yeah. and know it and sexy yes and sexy yeah so I've been uh, also watching your work you know and um re- let me know if I'm wrong because I saw you ha- have been working on some music videos in Rwanda, you know, and um, how does that work with your work? Uh, yes, that I was trying to work in, you know, to incorporate fashion in in Rwandan music, you know, to try and see the, the dressing part. It's always been a problematic for me, really, yeah. because, you know, uh, dressing is... It's an aesthetic. Yeah. It's an aesthetic. And, you know, when I see a music video that has a lot of potential, but I don't see that like, people are putting effort in the in the clothing side. And I know you want to put the message out there, and I appreciate that, but I think it would be much better and look much better if you, you know, focused on the clothes side as well. Yeah. Because... Um, you know, when you hear something, it's easy to forget. But yeah. when you see something, it's hard to forget. You could remember what you had by because of the way you saw it. And so it's the visuals. You see, that's why uh, you see how like music videos, you know, they used to be, okay, it started with audio. I mean, we all listen, but we all want to see what is connected to what we are hearing. Exactly. And so it's the the visual part I want, you know, like people to put to pay more attention to. And yeah. Yes. I think it you know, it helps the the image of the artists to 
Yeah. Yeah. No, no, really, uh, I think you're right. And I think also it's very, very important because these yes. days we have a lot of uh, music coming out. Yes. You know, drop, really legit. And also, I think it's very nice if those music have a music video that inspires, you know, not only in vocal, but also dancing, but also... You know. fashion you know yes. how are people dressing how people are looking the makeup uh, you know everything yes. the lighting yes. so i think everything contributes you know yeah yeah and i saw your work with uh, tita diana from uh, yes. who is based in sweden r- right now yeah. but uh, she's randy's and uh, i saw your music video with her and yeah. that was really beautiful <laughs> yeah. you know how was the like the making the music video how was the process with the music video the the process okay it wasn't the the first um music video i had been in yeah but it's it's the first one that made me feel really 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 good because um i didn't have to be someone else i had to be aline yeah and that's what i like to be and i i like when um you know she asked you know would you be comfortable wearing makeup if you'd be comfortable wearing makeup then you can bring your own makeup and you know do it the way you want or talk to the makeup artist and you know have it done for you the way you feel more like yourself mm. and so it's the it was a really really good experience nice. the team everything was everyone was good and i had to be myself i mean like someone actually cared for how you feel about yourself yeah and so i think that's why i really really did a great job because mm-hmm. then you know my opinion mattered somehow so do you feel like uh, in other music video maybe you've worked on i'm just wondering you didn't have uh, essay yeah I, I, essay? I, yes mm. because it's like okay well come oh you're going to be this but to be this not me mm. And most of those videos, it's not Aline. It's an image created to fit that video. And there are many ways you can have, you can, you know, match you being yourself and fitting the concept. Mm -hmm. And also, I think, um, well, our music industry is still coming up. I think, you know, learning to care more about that because I've seen... You know, actresses in in uh, video vixens is that yeah. what they call them? Mm. Yes. Um. You know, in music videos, and I've met some of them. You know, on projects or where I was styling, and they're not happy with what is going on, and so I think they should care more about that side too. Mm. Yes. So. You think uh, you guys don't have the freedom to explore your art actually itself? To actually express yourself, it's mm. about being who you are. Because when you, you are doing something and you love it, but the other person is not really giving you the value yeah. you think it deserves, it's really disheartening. Yeah. They're not respecting the experience you have. They just want to say, yes. no, I want you as a model in my music video. So yeah, this so just is stand how you're there. Yeah. You don't have a say. Just, mm-hmm. just stand there, here, yeah. here. Oh. But actually, if they <laughs> would give you a space to also yeah. show them like, yeah, I'm excited to be a model in this music video, but uh, I think yes. if maybe I stand like this, yeah, it, it would be, be much better, better and more comfortable because you s- can see like a music video, mm. like the the girls they're gorgeous or yeah. yes they're amazing, but you can I can sense the discomfort just by looking at them or you see by the way they're looking in the camera or it's just it looks so staged, it doesn't look like them. And, so and why do you think do you think is because um many of the music directors in Rwanda are male or yes yes that's partly it because they then don't understand how it feels to be mm. behind the camera yeah. being the the girl mm. you see and i think directors should learn to take opinions from those they're actually like because you're not the one in front of the camera. You yeah. don't know how it feels, the nervousness, the the feeling you get when you're actually doing this. Mm. And so, yes, I think one, them being male and them having no or less experience to, into being in front of the camera, yeah. and it, it makes it can make them, you know, insensitive to what is going on there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if I would contribute to that, I feel like 
there is a need of a, co- um, a collaboration, you know? Because yes. if the director is there, he or she is there because she has uh, or he has a lot of experience directing, you know? Yes. And you being there also, there is a reason why, because you're the best in what you do, you know? So which means both of you have a voice to add on that product, you know? Yes. And what you guys need is to have a final nice product and an inspiring one. So to have that one, I feel like um, there should be some more collaboration and more uh, understanding and trying to talk more and uh, build up and brainstorm together. Yes, and and Mm. more of, um, actually less of, I am the boss. I hate that that look, that um, way of seeing things. Yes, if you call someone to come for something, Mm. whether you're going to pay them or whether you're just like working with them, I don't know what your deal is, but if you call someone to work on something, it means they should have a say in it Yeah, because they are going to be part of it. Yeah, And so I don't like where you you just like, just come, you just sit there and they're there, they're doing Mm. their things. You don't understand what is going on. How can you even try to be or to do the best you can when you don't fully understand what is going on the concept the things and i just think uh mostly people think you know girls they underestimate girls who go or act into music videos they think that i don't know it's like they think they haven't gone to school or something Mm. or they're they're less smart but that's not true Mm. that's not true it's it's so so wrong yeah no, no, uh, I feel you. I feel you. And I also, I've been to some uh, few uh, music sets in Rwanda, you know. I've worked on different uh, music videos. But I also felt like that. As a male choreographer, as a male dancer, I felt like that because most of the times you find these director, these uh, music directors, they don't give you a space also for something you do. Because yes. if I've been choreographing music videos, you know, I have an experience, I have something to contribute on it, you know? So I feel like it's the same thing with also fashion designing, you know? If you are working on the music video and costume designing and you feel like the director is just like, no, you guys do this. No, no, I don't want you to do this. Just stand there, no, no, you know? And yeah, I feel like there is just a need of flexibility between um, anyone who is working on a team, you know? Because at the end of the time, we are all beneficial for the final product because we all want the final product to be good, you know, yeah. because everyone is paid. The director is paid. You are paid. I am paid. But at the end, we want a nice product. Yes. I don't want to mm. be part of something where I will look bad. No. Exactly. <laughs> because if you look bad also, for example, then the director didn't do anything. Yeah. And it's also... Uh, a bad thing for your image yeah. because you know um okay video vixens or people who make appearances in music videos or other projects that require visuals mm. right um it's like you know if the director does a bad job if the makeup artist does a bad job if the costume designer does a bad job you're the one who is going to look bad you see and Period. that's why like that person should have a say in in what they're doing on them yeah. not like oh we brought the makeup artist they know how to do makeup yes they know how to do makeup but do they know the makeup that suits you mm-hmm. do they know the makeup that feels comfortable with you do they know if you like more or less no that's a good point you see and i think that's really something that uh people listening to us if you are a music director you should think about you know if you are a fellow artist and uh, you are always involved in music uh, videos and stuff you know yeah. yeah it's very important to talk about that yeah it's also very important to know that you you have a say into something even if you're being paid i mean i mean you're being paid yes yeah but you you have a say into something so just say what you think stop complaining because it's it's the one thing I've seen here. I mean, people rant and rant, but they don't do anything about it. Yeah. No, no, definitely, definitely. Very nice. Now I have um, a question because I'm not in the fashion uh, industry. Oh yes, you know, uh, yes. 
Uh, I don't know so much about it. I'm a fan, but uh, not so much uh, information about it. And I have different friends who are fashion designers. And I just want to like ask a question because I'm curious to know, like, how do you see the industry of, because uh, for me, I feel like the industry of fashion in Rwanda has become very big, you know, compared to like maybe five years ago, you know. The industry is really big right now. I don't know if it's big on one side or if it's big in general. Or how how do you feel? You know how how do you see it? Um, I think there is progress. Yes, mm. I think there is progress in the fashion industry in Rwanda, and I think it's where I mean it's decent. Mm. It's decent, but there is a lot to be done. I think there is so much, so much to be done. Because uh, I know it's big, but then, you know, when I see, this, you know, some designers or a lot of designers I know of who are, you know, out there, I think most of the works look the same, you know? Mm. I, I, I want a little bit of personality in the, in the clothing. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to bring. And I hope there are, you know, a lot of other people who are working on that. Because, you know, individualism is something really, really good. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's it's not always about the things that sells most. Yes. It's also about, you know, like the people. The, yeah. No, definitely. Definitely. I think it's something um, that people should also... Because I've been also... I mean, oh, let's uh, maybe let's talk about Cedric, for example. You know, Cedric Mizero, you know... Uh, when you look about his work, you know, and uh, he's involving these uh, women from the village, you know, and fashion for all, you know, for me, that catches my attention because yes. I'm like, damn, you yeah, know, that's e- because exceptional. yeah, that's ex- exceptional. It's not every day you see people from the village, especially these strong women, you know, who are always cultivating, bring the food that we eat, you know, and you see the fashion with them those old men uh, from the village and i'm like yes because then the fashion is not limited yeah it's not limited to pretty girls just yeah. say that yes exactly. and, and models and and just like um a specific type of bodies of you know tall guys and tall girls who look like this but yeah that's another problem i have with the fashion industry and i said well, it's it's up to me and to others to try and you know make a change because, yeah, fashion for all. It's yeah. not only it's not only the models who get dressed. Yeah, not only skinny. Yes. Models. Yes, not only skinny models. Yeah. Or a specific type of bodies that yeah. wear those clothes. If you're creating something for everyone, then make them feel represented, even yeah. in the you know advertisement, the commercials and. Mm. everything it's very very important i mean yeah. having been on that side as a model um yes i've worked on different campaigns but it's always been something like oh you're too short you're too dark i've been told that mm. like five times or you know your hair it's like this or you know you yeah yeah and it's it's really it's just annoying sometimes think, not yeah. feeling represented or seeing people who have the same body as yours the the fashion industry seems to be working on that but it hasn't gotten somewhere where you can think that you're not just bringing some people one or two plus size models to show that you're including others it's it's not you know like where when you go for a casting they are going to pick as many models of this size as that mm. one yes it's just like oh we have 30 tall conventional way of looking at models and two plus size models wow inclusion and one black woman mm. yes but I also I feel like for me I see the future is bright yes because if I have you here and we are talking about this and I see that the vision you have is really, really good and changing the minds of the society and the people. Then I'm like, yes, I have hope that it's going to change because you are a young uh, female fashion designer out there, you know, killing it and doing your stuff. 
and this is it you know this is i think this is just the beginning you know and you are the change oh. <laughs> you know you are the change and uh it's exciting you know it's not an easy road because sometimes it's not easy to change what people always uh, are used to consume yes but it's worth it i think it yeah, is yeah it's so. very 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 inspiring but also it changed it changed lives of people and i'm sure you're going to see that with your work uh, the more you continue to work but i see i see that you're going to do a big impact oh, thank big you very no, much no big up to yourself no, thank you for being here you oh know, you know, really thank you for being here you know and i can't wait i can't wait really to to see more of your work you know i've been following you on social media and uh i mean people if you want to know alin i guess you can give them your handles and then they can be lucky also to follow you because yeah. i'm lucky i follow you you know oh yeah so it's alin amik Alina Mick. Yes. Yeah. Like one <laughs> one, one word. word. Alina Mick on Instagram. Oh yes. And there on my page, my official page, you can see my brand page and Yeah. Yeah. Cuz you have mentioned it on the Yes, on it's the page. in my bio. Nice. Yes. Perfect. Big up to yourself. Big up to all listeners. Big up to everyone always listening to the Journey podcast. You know, I feel very grateful, you know, what it is. And guys, please recommend me many artists as you can. You know, I would enjoy bringing artists that you guys want me to bring in the studio. And this was a lean with myself Manzimbaya. You know, we had a good time. Yeah. Really yes. inspiring conversation. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening to the Journey podcast, the number one podcast in the country. Remember this is a new edition, this is on 2. And you already know, much love and respect. Boom boom. Yeah.